Welcome to my channel. It looks like things are crashing down around Fonnie Willis. We'll get to that in a minute, but first, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for liking them, for sharing them, and for commenting. And thank you especially to those of you who have subscribed. I continue to get new subscribers every day and it just amazes me. I'm absolutely stunned. So some of you know I have covered this story before and I've called her Fanny Willis, but in these uh, videos that you're going to be watching here, they pronounce her name Fanny, so that's how I'm going to pronounce it from now on. Breaking news at this hour, the state Senate will now conduct their own investigation into allegations that Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis had an improper relationship with one of her top prosecutors. Line of News First political reporter Doug Reardon live at the courthouse for us downtown. Doug, lay out today's developments. Right, Tracy, well, this was approved this morning. It will be made up of nine state senators who are Republicans and nine who are, uh, excuse me, three who are Democrats. They're going to have subpoena power, which is really kind of the rub here because that will allow them to demand documents and also testimony from people like Fonnie Willis and the man she is alleged to have been in that improper relationship with her special prosecutor, Nathan Wade. So uh, as we mentioned, that was approved uh, by senators this morning. It was proposed just last week. So that process went relatively rapidly what they won't have the power to do, though, is remove her from office. Instead, what will happen? Yeah. This, we see this all the time, especially at the federal level. Investigation after investigation after investigation. The problem is legislative bodies have no power to do anything. The best they can do is refer someone to the Department of Justice for, for a, a prosecution. And the Department of Justice can just stick their finger in there and say, screw you, we're not going to do it. And that's what we're seeing at the federal level. I don't know if that's what we'll see at the state level in Georgia, but, you know, these Senate investigations and House investigations that they do, in my opinion, are just, they're just political shows is what they are. They're dog and pony shows. And they're not, they're, they're not, their only purpose is to hurt someone politically. I mean, I don't, I guess there's a purpose for that, especially in a case like this where someone has obviously done wrong, but uh, to me, they're just a waste of time. Okay, check this out. This chocolate literally shatters fat cells into tiny pieces and flushes them out of your body. So Sorry for the ads. It went viral. Emails obtained by the Fox 5 I team shed new light on claims of racism made by Fulton DA Fonnie Willis in response to criticism of how she's handling the election interference case. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Russ Spencer. I'm Courtney Bryant. Willis has already lashed out publicly at critics of her decision to hire a special prosecutor with limited felony trial experience. A man court filings claim she is also dating. Let's bring in Fox 5 I team reporter Randy Travel Travis. And Randy, these emails suggest this is not the first time she's suggested she's being singled out for being a black woman. That's right, Courtney. Yeah, Russ, uh, the emails are largely between Willis's office and Trump defense attorney Steve Sadow, but they were included in a group email to the legal teams of all 15 remaining defendants. They were sent two days after one of those defendants filed a motion accusing Willis of having a romantic relationship with one of her top prosecutors. This was D.A. Fonnie Willis January 14th, days after accusations surfaced in court filings that she paid special prosecutor Nathan Wade at least $660,000 to head up the Trump investigation, while at the same time allegedly vacationing together on trips to California and the Caribbean. So far, her only explanation is to talk about race. It's almost never see a black man as qualified, no matter his achievements. But according to emails obtained by the Fox 5i team, Willis has also used race when talking to defense attorneys. With a January 8th motions deadline fast approaching, and Trump attorney Steve Sadow repeatedly emailed asking whether the DA's office had a certain document that had not been turned over for discovery. At one point on December 27th, he wrote in all caps, please respond to my emails below. 
After admitting she deemed some of the emails not worthy of a response, Willis's executive district attorney, Daisha Young, responded January 10th. We are both aware, especially as an African-American woman, some find it difficult to treat us respectfully. Willis herself also weighed in. In the legal community and the world at large, some people will never be able to respect African-Americans and or women as their equal and counterpart. That is a burden you do not experience. Further, some are so used to doing it, they are not even aware they are doing it, while others are intentional in their continued disrespect. It just seems so incredibly appropriate to go. So. <sighs> So, Fonnie Willis is being accused of having an affair with a gentleman whom she hired, although he lacked the qualifications for the job, as the special prosecutor in the Trump case in Georgia. She's accused of having paid him twice what is normally paid to special prosecutors and of having gone on vacations with him using the money that he's making off of this case. And her defense is racist, sexist. That's her defense so far. Uh, I don't think she's going to get very far with it. But you never know. Time will tell. Now this next Do you one like is interesting. That mom can call you on it. Whenever Riley gets to school, Again, I get a notification on my phone that. She All right, Sandra, a judge has just granted Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis a temporary stay in her fight to avoid being deposed in her alleged lover Nathan Wade's divorce case. Wade, of course, is the special prosecutor that Willis tapped to oversee the Trump case, and the two traveled together. Calls continue for. Now, she doesn't want to be deposed in the case because it will all blow up in her face. Both Willis and Wade recused themselves from prosecuting former President Trump and his 18 co-defendants, with some of those charged calling for the case to be thrown out entirely. One of those people is the former president. Let's bring in Jonathan. Now, <clears throat> this is Jonathan Turley. Now, Jonathan Turley, in my opinion, is one of the few legal commentators that they bring on TV who is fair-minded and doesn't tilt in one direction or the other when he's discussing cases. He just discusses the the, the particulars of the case. And that's the reason why I'm showing Surely, you Surely, George Washington University law professor and a Fox News contributor. So, Jonathan, she is not out of the woods yet in terms of this subpoena to be deposed in the Jocelyn Wade, Nathan Wade divorce case. The judge today ruled that he wants to wait for an evidentiary hearing to take place on January the 31st into the Nathan Wade divorce case. And then he'll make a decision. Which way do you think this is going to go? Well, I think this is a logical decision by the court. He's just basically <clears throat> freezing the action until he gets all the evidence in front of him. Uh, but the damage is already done for Willis, and in many ways, she's really magnifying that damage uh, with her move. She filed uh, a, a motion before the court mm -hmm. that attacked the estranged wife of her alleged lover as an adulterer and a political conspirator. It was the worst possible tact that she could have taken. I mean, she could have just said, I'm not relevant. It could, she could have said, uh, a, a deposition is not needed. And instead, she did this full-on attack. And that only raises further questions. I mean, the, the, you have the original decision that she made, which in my view was deeply unethical, uh, in hiring someone mm -hmm. that she had an alleged intimate relationship with. But she compounded that afterwards uh, in, in her response. It's clear that Mr. Wade and Willis herself are undermining the case for her office. And so she's putting their interests ahead of the office. That's the very thing that conflict of interest rules are meant to avoid. So, so I had a look at the motion uh, that she... So, again, as I always do, I'll put all these links in the description for you. And... Uh, 
I have another one I want you to see. This is a citizen in Fulton County, Georgia, speaking to the Board of Commissioners. Blasting game. It is a clear. It's a, it's a, good morning, Commissioners. Derek Blasting game. It is a clear. It's a, it is a pleasure and an honor to, to address you all today. Some of you all have made the comment this morning on my way here that he's done. He's through. It's over. Well, I want to let you know that Derek Blasting game. I'm done with Fulton County fumbling our elections. I'm done with the gross mismanagement of our taxpayer dollars by the Fulton County Democrats on this body. I'm disgusted at the information that is coming out of the district attorney's office as a taxpayer. I am done with most of your silence at the DA's apparent love affair with the special prosecutor and gross mismanagement of taxpayers' dollars to pursue what appears to be a frivolous lawsuit based off of partisan politics. Apparently, guys like me need to court Fulton County female executives if we want a free ride at all paid expense. Apparently, we need to pursue Natalie Hall and Fonnie Willis, or maybe the executives in other departments, if we want a full ride and full pay. The DA appears to be trying to protect past elections, but upon information and belief, she's trying to interfere with future elections by trying to convict the candidate before the general election. I'm requesting a financial audit to be done by the county auditor of the district attorney's office immediately. There is no way that you get more money when you're spending money, allegedly, for unnecessary and frivolous purposes. Also, these judges need to hire a lobbyist instead of grandstanding this board with these mediocre public relations stunts. Magistrate Court still needs a systemic boost and an IT transformation that's been achieved by the Superior Court clerk. It needs to be pulled together. 15 seconds. Thank you. Finally, I'm urging you to appoint Julie Adams to the Board of uh, Registration and Elections without delay. And uh, we, need to, we need somebody that's transparent, that's open, and that can be open-minded to all concerns and can address the people's needs. I am also want that audit of the uh, DA's office immediately. Now, you can hear the people applauding in the background, so there's at least a few citizens in Fulton County that agree with him. But, you know, the, the board of Fulton County is Democrat, overwhelmingly Democrat, so uh, <laughs> they're going to avoid investigating any of this until they absolutely have no option other than to, to investigate. That's just the way it works in politics in America today. So there's an update for the Fannie Willis case, excuse me, Fannie Willis case. <clears throat> As always, I put the links in the description so you can follow up on this and listen for yourself if you want. You know, I've said before I'm not in the prediction business because I, my predictions never come true. But if I were going to predict something, I would say that this case will fall apart, that Fonnie Willis is in serious trouble. Uh, she doesn't have to worry about Fulton County commissioners. She doesn't have to worry about the state department of Ju or the uh, federal part department of justice, but she may have to worry about the uh, state of Georgia because that's controlled by Republicans. So they'll be willing to go forward with uh, charges if they can find anything to charge her with if she's done anything wrong as always I pray that you my my viewers will live abundant lives that you'll be healthy and that you'll have a long life and that God will keep you safe from harm and I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love and I pray that you will be anxious for nothing but in all things through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you'll make your request known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet, out.